Hi everyone and welcome to another Clo tutorial. Today I'm going to be going through everything on how to create a custom Clo avatar. I'm going to show you all the steps on how to customize and personalize your avatar to your own aesthetic and look. So let's begin by opening our libraries and finding the default avatar folder. So Clo offers a few default avatars about five men, uh, three kids and five women. So obviously you can pick whichever one you like to work with. I'm going to be working with a V2 avatar and you'll notice that if you hover over an avatar you get a small preview of what avatar you're about to pick. So for this tutorial I'm going to use Grace. I double click on her and I can see her loaded in the 3D window. I can now interact with her if I want to. You'll also notice that she is wearing grey underwear and she comes default wearing heels. This is just how all our avatars come default but I'm going to show you how to change all of that. So you'll notice that in each avatar folder, there's a few default folders that come in place, such as hair, shoes, size. So for now, I'm going to start with size. And if you go into this folder, you'll see a bunch of different ASTM folders, varying in shape from petite to curvy. If you double click in any of these folders, you'll get a bunch of different sizes from a size 2 to 20, maybe even a 22 in some of them. And if you click on any of them, you'll notice how her proportions change immediately. So this is really good if you want to work off the peg. So let's say you wanted to create a custom avatar based on your size specs. You can do this through the avatar editor. Once you click on it, you'll get a window that pops up and in here you can input your size specs. You can be as detailed as you like, varying from basic to advanced body. And you can even choose the unit that you choose to work in. So be it centimeters, millimeters, etc. You'll notice at the top that you can input the total height and the underbust circumference and you'll see that for example if I input the height how the whole body changes proportionally. But let's say you wanted to be a bit more specific and actually input each individual part for example center back, bust, knee, you can do that as well. You can select each point and you'll see how the same body part on the avatar highlights yellow so this way you get a great indication as to what you're changing and you can see everything changing instantly in the 3D window on your avatar. So now I'm happy with my size spec, I want to save this and I can do this through the save icon on the avatar editor and from here I can save these as AVS files and I can have a complete library of all my different size specs that I can then open later on a different avatar. So here are some that I created prior, such as Hourglass or Straight, and you can see how the avatar immediately changes the second I open it. So now I want to change the aesthetic of Grace. So in order to do this, I, I allocate her folder and I can go to hair. And from here, you'll see a bunch of default hair options and hairstyles such as bob, ponytail, etc. And if I double click on any of them, it will load immediately onto her head and I can see what the style will look like. If I want to change her hair color, I need to select the hair on her. And then from here, I need to go to the property editor, go to color and I can play around now and I can give her hair a different color. Once I'm happy with my choice, I can just press OK. And there we go. So you'll notice that she's wearing grey underwear, or maybe you want to change the colour of her underwear, or maybe you want to make her nude completely. In order to do this, we need to go back a folder and go down to texture. From here, you'll see that there's a bunch of de default texture options, such as covered and nude. You need to select her body part on the avatar. And from here, you can drag and drop nude straight onto the texture in the property editor and you'll immediately see that she changes to become nude. If you want to reverse that you again need to grab covered and you need to drag and drop that onto texture as well. But let's say that I wanted to express some makeup on her. In order to do this I need to select her face. I need to go to texture in the property editor and allocate the four dots next to texture. From here, I get all her different textures such as eyes, face, etc. And I can drag and drop that straight onto Photoshop. From here, I can express different makeup the way that I like. 
I need to set different sub layers. And from here, I can overlay different colors, for example, and blend them in. And I can create the sort of makeup and style that I want. Now that I'm happy with my makeup, all I need to do is save this as a JPEG. Make sure that I can allocate it again. And then all I need to do is find that folder whilst I'm in Clo and just open it. And you'll see immediately that her face has changed, she has makeup. And the same theory applies for any body part. For example, if I want to change the color of her underwear, I would also need to follow the same process. So this is just a really good way that you can be as creative as you like with your avatar. Now I want to change her shoes. From here, all I need to do is allocate the shoe folder and you'll see a bunch of default shoe options such as combat boots, pumps, sneakers. If I double click on one, you'll see it load straight onto her feet. And from here, I can customize the color. So I just select the shoe on the avatar. I go to color in the property editor and now I can customize the shoe color. I can work based on Pantone or I can be a bit more specific and drag around that I drop and pick the color that I want. So you'll notice that Grace is still in a healed position. That's because I haven't changed her pose. So in order to do this, I go to the pose folder, I go to flat on floor, and I allocate the same pose, the T pose, but flat on floor. I ensure it's pose only and that is aligned to the bottom. Now you'll notice that she is sitting flat on floor. You'll also notice in the same folder there's a bunch of different poses as well. So these are again default ones that Clo offers and if you double click on one, ensure it's pose only, you'll instantly see how the pose of your avatar will change. So you can just play around with the default ones that we have to offer. But again, you can also be more specific. If you go to your 3D toggle bar, you'll see that there's an option for show X-ray joints or shift X. So you'll notice that your avatar has changed into a gray skeleton. If you select one of the body parts, you can see that you can rotate and move each one with the gizmo. If you want it to be symmetrical with the other side of the body, you need to select the little gray avatar icon and you'll see that it changes blue. And now you can move and rotate symmetrically both body parts. If you want to prevent that, you need to click on it again and the avatar will turn back grey. you also notice that if you select a joint, that if you try and move it, it almost distorts it. In order to prevent this, you need to make sure your IK joints are turned on. From here, you'll get green IK joints and then you can move and adjust your pose of your avatar. You'll also notice that if you move one body part, the whole body kind of moves in synchronicity with that. If you want to prevent that, you need to ensure that edit body part is turned on instead. From here, you can edit the single body part instead of the whole body. If you want to see what your avatar will look like whilst changing its position, you can move a body part and press Shift X at the same time, and you'll see that the avatar will change back into its more human form. If you want to go back to X-Ray, you have to again press Shift X. Now you can play around and change the position of your avatar. So now you can save your pose as a POS file. If you go to File, Save As, Pose, you can create a library of all your poses and then you can open them later on a different avatar. So I created some prior. All I need to do is allocate them. I double click on the pose, ensure that it's pose only and it's aligned to the bottom. And you can see that the pose of my avatar changes based on all the different poses that I've created prior. So as a little teaser, I'm going to show you how to create a motion file. In order to do this, I need to actually use a V1 avatar because currently the V2 avatars don't have motion files. This will change in our new release, but for now, I'm going to use a custom avatar that I made of Emma, who is a V1 avatar. So I'm just going to bring her into the 3D space. And I'm going to now import a dress onto her because in order to create a motion file, you need a garment. So I'm just going to bring in a dress that I created prior. I'm going to ensure that it fits all correctly. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to create the motion. 
So in order to create a motion file, you need to go to your avatars folder. So I'm going to go to the V1 now. I go to motion and in here you'll see a bunch of different motion files which involve dress, hand on hips. You can select any one of those. You just double click and ensure that all the boxes are ticked and press OK. You'll immediately notice that Emma has stepped off the grid and that's because she's now creating space to do her walk. So in order to get her walk in, all I need to do is ensure simulations on and now I can play motion. And you will see that Emma will start walking in the 3D space. So I hope you like what you saw today. Please like and subscribe for more tutorials and hopefully see you guys again soon.